Hey everyone, we're going to do a quick video today, so thanks for tuning in. I'm just going to have a product overview on the Leo Vence uh, slip-on exhaust, right? So the R6 currently has the two brothers, but you know, as I said in the intro video, it's pretty beat up. There's scratches everywhere. I looked at rebuilding this thing, and at this point, uh, from a cost perspective, it just makes sense, right? My impressions of the overall exhaust, the quality, just a quick product quality update, and then we'll see how this goes. So let's jump right in. All right, so it's from a product quality standpoint, yeah, let's take a look. The box, of course, uh, very well made. So I think protection, definitely, you can tell this is what they do for a living, right? So you have a great shipping protection for the canister. And of course, you're having stickers, registration information, and overall. But you know, I've had their exhaust before. I had it on a CBR 600 full titanium. So I was impressed back then. And this is great, right? So you can see everything is well packaged. And here's the canister. Looks like great quality. And you know, you can see even from the TIG welds, everything is very well put together. And you know, very impressive with the etching and just the overall color. It looks great. Um, it's very lightweight, right? So I went with the non-carbon just because of the carbon degradation on the two brothers here. Um, I just wanted to make sure something is something more uh, catchy and something that pops with a bike and doesn't blend right in. And this is why I went this route. Great price on this too. I got it from Revzilla. I've been uh, having some great luck with Revzilla as of recently, especially with their pricing. And then it's also coming, of course, with the link pipe, right? So this one is uh, going right up to the cat, right? So. Um, I know people are doing the cat uh, eliminator, the Y pipes and so forth. Most likely I'll do the header system later on, uh, but for now I just I really need to address this one because it's definitely an eyesore and you know I don't want to have issues with um, the overall like exhaust gases kind of leaking and so forth. So I just try to take this one, take care of this one correctly. And also it's coming with the relevant hardware right so you're having the exhaust bracket you're having all the necessary instructions for this one and um, also the, the clamps right and hardware so you have the spring and the hardware specific so this is definitely um, something i'm looking forward to putting into the bike and we're just gonna uh, continue on right so i'm gonna go ahead and take the old pipe off and put this one back on and I'll let you know how this one goes. So on this one I'm just going to take out the exhaust bracket right on the two brothers. It's a 12 millimeter. And you know I'll see whether this is worth re really rebuilding or not but when I was starting to do the pricing like I think just with the exhaust components, there's already over $100, right? So it's like 60 or 80 for the end caps, and then I'd have to do some, potentially the gold part here where it's mating to the exhaust. So at that point, I wasn't even sure if I'd want to continue with that. Then potentially this lower fairing here. Let's see if I can just get away with just loosening it. I have to take it out. Then I have the, the pipe clamp it is a T30. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was a T30. That was actually just rusted up. So five millimeter. Five millimeter. Take this sucker out. Alright. 
Here's the old exhaust, like I was saying, right? You can see this magnesium end cap is just shot, right? And then the spacing here with the end cap is just like warp due to the heat. And then the exhaustion of the carbon fiber, right? The detail is completely just shot there. And then, of course, the emblem as well. So like replacing that one, you can see this quickly adding up over $100 already. Because so I'd have to replace the end emblem, have to replace the end cap, and then depending on the spacing, like I can tell it's either the warping that's happening from the magnesium end cap or this gold piece as well is scratched up at some point. So I'd have to replace that. And then you can see here there's also some corrosion happening. So whether I could salvage that or not, and then the corrosion, of course, at the end. So it just made sense to go with a new pipe and then I'll see what I can do, maybe a good backup for track or whatever. But effectively, I would need to even repack this and um, just with the, with this, yeah, obviously replacing it. I, I'm a fan of this anti-seize product, right? This never seize. I always put it on a lot of the parts that corrode in order to break components because it's high heat. Um, it's something that I picked up working at the BMW engineering workshop like almost 15 20 years ago um, But it's this specific one this Bostic never sees and this is the brand I go for and All my bikes or all, all my race cars. This is what I use and it never fails, right? Especially when you start um, putting on additional components so from my standpoint strong recommendation to put that in any you know, where corrosion areas, high heat areas where you need uh, things not to seize. So then of course there's a parts diagram, right? So this is your best shot at having instructions. And yeah, you just look at it. It's very self-explanatory and you're effectively just assembling it as it looks like, right? And um, it's not rocket science guys, right? So just follow, follow the instructions, make sure you put the bracket, they even have a little spring, um, you know, helper so that you can install the the uh, spring tool right so you can get that in there um, but very high quality all the components all the hardware so definitely uh, highly recommended all right so you're gonna take the link pipe and of course take the flared unit right with the ones with the slots that's what's gonna connect to the bike and then you want to make sure you install already the exhaust clamp all right, I'm also going to put a little bit of that never sees inside, right? And then I'm going to assemble the exhaust and the pipe. So you can see the spring hanger, right? You have to align that, make sure it's uh, aligned. And it's going to kind of go in the bottom, right? And if you get fingerprints, don't worry, just get WD-40, right? If you're not having gloves or whatever, but you know, this is all part of it. And then the, the nut, the exhaust clamp is going to go on this side, right? And then effectively, I'm going to get that in there as much as possible. And then the clamp is going to go there. And then now I'm going to assemble the remainder, which is the bracket, right? Just putting on the spring, right? So you get the spring tool. You take the spring and connect it. I always recommend coming from the pipe, right? And then going towards the exhaust. Because otherwise you'll be fighting against it and then it'll be popping out. So if you go towards it, it's not gonna uh, pop out. And then some tips and tricks, as I said, this, it's like a conical. And this bolt, right, is going to be the smaller conical mounting and smaller bolt that connects to the exhaust muffler. Then this one is going to be the bigger conical mounting, right, that's that billet piece here, and a longer bolt. And this bracket, right, is effectively, um, you know, you can see it's a smaller hole here, bigger hole there. So those are the tips and tricks, right? Smaller. Old smaller conical mounting uh, spacer in the rear and then in the front is the bigger conical mounting spacer and the bigger bolt and then the, the bracket effectively goes with the smaller bolt hole 
then goes down, tilts towards the bike, and then goes back here into the bigger bracket. So now I'm just gonna tighten these up quickly and then that's it. And these are effectively uh, six millimeter, right? So these new Linovinci mounting hardware is gonna be six millimeter. Everything's tight, and that's it. So I'll just clean this up now with WD-40, and again, super easy install, quick. Um, the hardware, all of it, is very well done from uh, Leo Vinci, and you know, the exhaust looks great. All right, that looks super clean now that I put the, you know, cleaned it all up. But um, you know, just like this laser etch Leo Vinci exhaust emblem there. And, I don't know, they, they provide also this uh, Levency exhaust muffler sticker. And you can know, like, it's different than the other ones. And you can tell because the backing, right? So this one's just normal backing, and then this one's having the aluminum backing, which is for the exhaust. And if you're wondering, maybe it looks so small and maybe it doesn't fit, cover it up, it actually does, right? So you can see the lettering. So you can definitely cover it up. I'm gonna go with it. I actually like the way this looks and uh, it's very akin to what I know Leo Vinci for. So I'm gonna install this one too. And then just line it up. Nice. Solid. Love it. All right, so definitely old, new, so much better. You can see with the size comparison, it's much smaller, much more compact. This definitely feels a lot more bulky. And, you know, this one, of course, like I said, seen its better days. Nothing against two brothers. You can't beat this right. We went to exhaust. We got it from Revzilla. So props to them. They just very quick with shipping so far and uh, the quality overall of the materials used, the hardware, it even comes with the exhaust hanger tool, which now I can use even on my car, right? Instead of using a little snap-on pick tools. Um, it's great, right? So overall, highly recommend it. channel and until next time, ride safe out there.